Hey everybody, this is Chris Kay, and you're listening to the Productive Parks 5-Minute Podcast, the show for busy people working to change the game in the parks and recreation field. Today we're going to be talking about parks and recreation departments and emergency management. You don't often hear recreation and emergency management used in the same sentence. It may seem hard to discover a connection between the two things. But when you take a closer look, parks and recreation departments can be invaluable resources for the community in case of a disaster or emergency. Using recreation departments for emergency management. Effective emergency management means being creative, adaptable, and resourceful despite challenges of a crisis. A parks department's resources, human and property, can help with the emergency management before, during, and after a crisis. Here are some ways Parks and Recreation Departments can assist with emergency management. Shelter. We've all heard how climate change contributes to more severe weather. When an area faces weather-related disaster, it often takes the entire community to come together to help those affected. A Parks Department's assets may serve as a respite area or shelter in case of an emergency. For example, a recreation center can be used for temporary housing during flooding or a tornado. Facilities can also serve as a command post during emergencies or a location to distribute resources such as food, water, or clothing. During a heat wave, facilities, splash pads, and shaded areas can provide relief for those without air conditioners. Personnel. One of a parks department's most important resources is its personnel. Recreation professionals have unique skills and experience to help manage people and resources during emergencies. After all, Parks staff has experience with facility operations, risk management, child care and development, essential maintenance, landscape management, and human resources. Many team members have CPR and first aid certification, and others possess more advanced skills like lifeguard training or wilderness first responders. The experience of implementing large-scale events can help response teams handle crisis. Many events don't go exactly as planned, Teams have to adapt if something unexpected happens quickly. Recreation professionals can assess, troubleshoot, and find solutions to ensure success. Plus, those in your department have experience working with vulnerable populations like elderly, children, and those with special needs. The rapport established may help those populations feel calmer, more secure, and willing to follow along with any emergency plans. Resources A parks department's equipment and supplies can also be helpful during an emergency. Maintenance equipment like chainsaws can help cut large fallen trees. Snacks and bottles of water from concession supplies can be used as nourishment. Tractors, trailers, or carts can help to bring supplies where they are needed most. Restoration. After an emergency, recreation departments often play an instrumental role in the community, taking the first steps to restoring normalcy to the public. Think about it, once the pandemic hit, one of the questions just about everyone had was, when will things return to normal? When something out of the ordinary impacts a community, everyone works together to address the basic needs of others. Once these needs are met, people start to seek comfort in enjoying the things that make up their daily routines. One key aspect of returning to normal involves pursuing leisure and recreation activities. Parks and recreation professionals provide this comfort by letting those in the community start participating in the things they love to do. How Parks Departments Can Prepare for Disaster A 2019 survey conducted by GP Red found that just over half of the departments surveyed had a Parks and Recreation Emergency Plan in place. More alarming, only 36% of the departments received formal training for emergencies or disasters. As we're all well aware, successful events require planning. Personnel from all disciplines need to understand what to do and how to do it during an emergency. Develop emergency action plans. Emergency action plans are written procedures detailing how the staff should respond during various types of emergencies. If your agency doesn't have an EAP, it's time to create one. Emergency action plans guide during natural disasters, extreme weather, fires, Disruptions in services like power, human-created disasters, health emergencies. EAPs could discuss evacuation procedures, escape routes, alerting the public about an emergency, and anything else that will keep staff and the public as safe as possible in an emergency situation. Provide training. 
The best EAPs mean nothing unless they get communicated and practiced. Keeping them in a binder and making new staff read them as part of an orientation process isn't enough. Imagine this, your department required you to do the first aid and CPR training class as part of your onboarding orientation. Twelve years later, you come upon someone unresponsive. You tap the person's shoulder, but still no response. You try to think back to your whole training over a decade ago. You wished you had a better memory or at least kept the workbook. Or hopefully the situation would play out more like this. You're required to complete a yearly first aid and CPR class and pass a skills test. After 12 years of blowing into the latex dummies, you come upon someone unresponsive. As a reflex, you tell a coworker to call for help. You check for a breath and a pulse. Nothing. You begin CPR almost without thinking about it. Train. Practice. Repeat regularly. Know your inventory. An intimate understanding of an agency's properties, facilities, equipment, supplies, and personnel will make dispersing those resources much more manageable during an emergency. Also, keeping a detailed inventory helps get items repaired, replaced, or restored quicker if they are damaged in a disaster. Repurpose available resources. During emergency situations, finding ways to use whatever resources are available to keep people safe, informed, and at ease can help lessen the effects of a bad situation. Brainstorm with your team how to use your available resources in different ways should disaster strike. Maybe your facility management software can help track who enters a shelter facility. Or your maintenance management software can create real-time work orders to assign staff to damaged areas. You can use supplies to manage parking during large events to section off a dangerous area. Emergencies happen. For just about every emergency that occurs, there are those that say they never expected it to happen in their community. Unfortunately, bad things happen just about anywhere. You can't always avoid emergencies, but you can have plans in place for when it happens. Preparing and understanding the resources available help the emergency management team help those in trouble quicker and more efficiently. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Productive Parks Podcast. Remember to tune in each week for more tips on how to make your agency more productive.